Thank you very much, Kupa, uh, Doctor, for that introduction. And I think uh, Asia, PFON, and Fiji Beekeepers Association for welcoming us as well as we are also learning a lot. Uh, regardless of the fact that we've been involved in beekeeping, we're still learning. Uh, I think that's one of the experiences from PNG. Uh, no matter how long you've been involved in beekeeping, uh, beekeepers, I mean bees exist in the environment that we live in and it's affected by climate change so every day we, we keep on learning and adding to our knowledge so uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation and our chance to share our experiences uh, before i go on i'll i'll introduce my counterparts from papua new guinea uh, agatha is a is another beekeeper uh, tela Loye is uh, one of our, our most experienced uh, B personnel in Papua New Guinea. He started off with beekeeping way back in the 80s and he's still there. Uh, Kelly and I is another industry player. Uh, they provide a lot of the support services uh, in PNG in terms of uh, beekeeping equipment supplies, training, as well as they also have their own network of extension apart from the government system. And Kelly and I also does uh, be a honey buying processing as well as uh, local construction of uh, big, beam, big beam equipment as well as training and extension so these are the four of us that we are here and we are glad to sell, uh, share our, our story with you uh, okay i'm from the department of agriculture and livestock uh, we have an extension division working with us we only provide the extension and all other support services as well as training and so forth, uh, we, we do in partnership with all our stakeholders. Yeah, this is a picture of a sensing group that came for, for the opening of uh, Mrs. Teller's honey processing facility. So just a picture of uh, on that occasion. So this gives a big, uh, brief history of uh, what, when beekeeping was introduced, our current developments future plans and opportunities that we have, as well as the, the constraints that we have in PNG. Uh, like uh, all our Pacific neighbors, bee or honey beekeeping was introduced by the missionaries in the 1930s as well. An official government program was introduced uh, under a bilateral project with the New Zealand uh, funded project in uh, around 1974 to 75. Uh, there was an agreement between New Zealand and PNG and that's when beekeeping was officially introduced to the government program. Uh, during one of those uh, like programs, uh, a lot of our beekeepers like Teller, they were part of the first lot of uh, technical people were, that were t taken to New Zealand for training. And when they came back, they, they became the heart and soul of uh, beekeeping in PNG. And a lot of that uh, activity in PNG is uh, based up in the highlands. Uh, in 1980s, uh, the Highlands Honey Producers Limited Company was uh, formed under that partnership project. Uh, basically, that company was handling everything from Queen breeding and distribution to doing extension, buying and processing. Uh, in the mid 1990s, uh, the company uh, closed down because of uh, various reasons, and that basically led to the like collapse of the industry because everything was done by one company. Uh, the risks were not shared. So soon after that, the department as well as uh, some of our strong uh, stakeholders like uh, our people that went for training as well as the farmers. They continued with uh, whatever they can to maintain or sustain the activity there. Uh, so right now they, they developed together with our farmers, they developed the bee associations. And under those arrangements, they encouraged people who can be able to do different things. People, uh, those technical officers who were able to produce queens, uh, 
with queens and distribute. They did it individually as, as a private entity. And some took up uh, big even equipment supplies, important sales. And Teller was one of those that started while he was still working as a government officer. So in a way, we, uh, we decentralized the, the whole system of honey beekeeping by encouraging different players to come into the picture and provide the whole uh, value chain approach to developing the industry. So we found out that I think that was a more like a sustainable way of uh, developing it because if somebody falls out for whatever reason, somebody else can come in and take over that uh, part of the uh, support services. So right now we have about uh, 6,000 hives uh, in 20 provinces of PNG with an estimate of uh, 100, uh, 1,000 beekeepers. The major growing or the honey keeping activity is concentrated around the uh, uh, center with, where the green marks uh, shows, uh, that's up in the highlands of uh, Papua New Guinea. Yeah. So it's to the center. The red, the red dot shows that uh, that's the highest number of hives that we have with uh, more than uh, 700, uh, I mean 3,000 to 4,000 hives. And the rest is uh, spread all over the country. Uh, right now, a lot of our beekeepers are mainly from the highlands as well as uh, the northern region where uh, Lay is. Uh, Morobe province. So that's, this is where all the concentration of our beekeepers are. So basically we haven't spread very much to a lot of the other provinces, although we have a number of hives uh, everywhere. Okay, well, on average we have uh, about six hives per, per farmer, uh, spread all over the country. Uh, there's some who have more than 200 hives, uh, another, the, our, our highest, uh, uh, the farmer with the, our, uh, the highest number of uh, beehives is about 300, uh, but our annual production is just uh, under 100 tons. So we still have a long way to go, regardless of the fact that we have a lot more hives. Our production per hive is uh, less than 20 kilograms. So right now our focus would be more or less trying to get our skills of our existing beekeepers up so that we can be able to produce uh, more kilos of uh, honey per hive. Our honey prices, the local honey prices in the shops, uh, now this is mostly the, sorry, the buying price of the local processors. Uh, in PNG, a lot of our honey I mean, our beekeepers don't produce to process, but they produce and sell to existing uh, processors. Uh, learning from Fiji and a few of the other countries, you have an import ban on honey, but in PNG it's still open, so we, we compete with imported honey. And that's another lesson we can learn from, PN, uh, from the other Pacific countries, uh, that if there's a possibility to also do uh, ban imports. Maybe that will help in terms of individuals trying to market their own brand of honey uh, based on the environment in which they do their beekeeping. So when the existing processing plant that was established under the New Zealand funded project uh, closed down, the association and the officers that tried to revive the, revive the industry, started off with uh, somebody else came in with some, a company that basically purchased honey from uh, local farmers. And they started off with 20 kina per kilo. So over the, over the uh, years, basically now it has gone up to about 15 to uh, 15 kilo, uh, 15 kina per kilo and up to 20 kina, 20 kina per kilo now which probably in Fijian dollars would be about $15 uh, dollars or so. So that's the kind of price that uh, our processors pay to the farmers to get the honey. So that's the price of the local uh, pro purchase honey from the farmers. Okay, our major uh, processors and buyers that exist right now are the Nguini Fruit, that's another company. 
uh, Mountain Honey, that's Mr. Inai's local uh, processing company. Uh, we have Queen's Harvest, that's another local company that buys honey off from the farmers. Uh, Goroka Finest Honey, that's Mrs. Stella's uh, local buying company. So these are the main companies that buy of honey from our local farmers. They process and then sell out to the uh, market out there, like uh, hotels, shops, and mining sites. Uh, so they, if you go to Port Mosby or other main centers, you will see uh, the local, some of these local honey on the shelves. But right now we have a uh, low production, so uh, you won't see a lot of our local honey on the market yet. Uh, a lot of the overseas honey is uh, on the table right now in, in, in PNG. The local honey price is in comparison to the overseas honey about 40 kina per kilo. And imported honey sells for about 60 kina per kilo. So that's the uh, kind of comparison. Yep. Uh, okay. Current stakeholders we have the bee farmers who are the main, like, uh, heart and soul of our industry, regardless of whether we have government support or not, these are the guys that keep the fire burning. So all other NGOs, government support systems sort of come and go. But these are the heart and soul of our beekeepers, our bee industry as well as our buyers and processors. So long as those two exist, we, we know that beekeeping will go on because they, they depend on each other as well as the honeybee equipment supplies, the four that we have. Queen bee breeders and supplies, there are five main ones who we recognize as very good queen bee breeders. So these are the ones that we recommend our beekeepers to go to. Extension services are provided by the government, both the, the national government, my office, as well as the provincial government in which the beekeepers exist. Uh, NGOs from time to time they come in and also assist with uh, various extension activities like training, like our, our chief trainer from Fiji mentioned. Uh, our farmer association, there's an existing farmer association, but we can learn a lot from the experiences of uh, Fiji Beekeepers Association. They, uh, they have, we have lessons we can learn from them on how well to manage and organize them. And other industries support industries that we have. So these are the main stakeholders in, our, in the beekeeping industry in PNG. So our immediate uh, like uh, priorities will be to increase local honey production, increase lo local honey production to increase in the hives, improve uh, quality of honey production, processing and marketing. And basically we have about 300 tons of local demand. So we have to meet that before we can work on uh, looking at overseas market. So in the pictures, you will see that uh, the kind of label that the Goroka's finest honey is uh, packaging in. It's Mr. Mrs. Teller's uh, product on the market yet uh, right now. Oh, in terms of government, there's a lot of uh, things that can come that needs to be done from policy level. Uh, we don't have a policy on beekeeping as such in the in the government policies that we have, so there's something we have to uh, develop. And there's also some opportunities because of the climate change issues that are coming in, so. Uh, but in order to benefit from that, we need the policies to guide us so that we can work with people involved in climate change to assist with whatever development activity that we do in beekeeping because as, as we all know, beekeeping is a climate-friendly uh, activity. Uh, strength and capacity building in terms of our technical people. A lot of our experienced beekeepers are sort of aging, so we need new, new young ones to come in. Uh, we're thankful to Asia for at least having two cadets we, uh, based with us in the research as well as the extension component. So we, we still have capacity problem in terms of at the, at the technical level in the office as well as training young people to go into research. Uh, in PNG, we don't do any research. We've been concentrating mainly on development. So that's an area that we also can look at and develop. Major research on pests and disease. In PNG, we have 
two major pests that are already existing, the Varroa Jacobsonae as well as the Tropilalefs. So I think that's, that's the last or the first Pacific Island country that's already got Tropilalefs. So uh, it's much more worse than Jacobsonae because of the faster rate of reproduction. And we still find ways to work with our farmers, so we have upskilled the level of, in terms of uh, managing tropical labs as well. Opportunities. Uh, PNG has potential to produce more natural organic taste honey without any additives. Uh, it has a conducive en environment. We have high demand for honey on the local market, but we can't uh, produce enough. Uh, currently, beekeeping is only in the highlands, but we can also spread to the rest of PNG. And our get greatest strength is that uh, our beekeepers persist whatever, regardless of whatever happens. So we can look at those as opportunities to build up on. Uh, current constraints that we have, like I said, poor knowledge in hive management. We need to do more so that we can increase the number of kilos of honey that we get per hive. We need to improve on government support. Uh, also, we have lack of research and uh, quite effective extension system, so we need to improve on that. And we have this issue of varroa and tropical labs. So, these, are, these also need uh, research as, as well as uh, extension material development to work with our honey beekeepers to uh, upskill their, their capacity in terms of managing that. And the cost of honeybee equipment is also expensive, so we have to find ways to lower the price by having more local production of uh, honeybee equipment. So those are the few, uh, profile of what PNG has been doing in beekeeping. Uh, for any stories or extent, uh, information that we people may be interested in during the interaction, we can talk, you can talk to some of our experienced uh, farmers here, as well as stakeholders, so that you can, we can share information, knowledge on our experiences, especially to do with the, the Varroa Jacobsona and Tropilales mite, as well as other things that we can uh, talk about. So thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation.